Hey guys, welcome back to Fringe Friday. I am Carmen and today we are delving further in to season five of Fringe with season five episode two. I am a little wary of what is going to transpire because I, it's a very noticeable shift in sort of tone and dynamic and feel for the first episode of season five, right? So I'm still getting my footing with the new fringe. And yeah, I'm curious as to how they're gonna do it. A little bit scared because one of you commented and you know who you are, that you could not wait to cry with me like throughout season five. So <laughs> that uh, fills me with fear. But I'm, I'm excited. I, like I said in the post episode discussion last time, I trust the writers. I trust where they're going. And I am hopeful that I will love season five and the way that the show ends as much as I have completely loved the previous four seasons. Sorry, all of that being said, I need to stop talking. Where are we? We are in 2036. Walter was captured, the plan has been destroyed, the one that was in his mind, and now we're sort of starting from square one again, and we have to figure out how to defeat the observers and save the world. You know, it shouldn't be too hard for the French team because they've done it like quite a few times at this point. Uh, I'm curious as to how they're gonna do it this time, and nervous but excited once again so without any more of my rambling let's just get started and find out what happens i think that i would be happy to stay here for the rest of my life so are we getting this from olivia's perspective now we should probably get her home soon come on kiddo it's time to go home Oh, that's... Yep. Anna! Anna, come here, now! Olivia. No, 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 I'm not gonna cry in the first fucking minutes of this episode. What happened? It's a little girl. girl. That can't be right. She was standing right in front of me. Anna! You were dreaming about her. Yeah, like you were. I'm still trembling. Process like it all just happened a couple of months ago. It didn't. She's here, and we're here. Yeah, but it okay would be now. so hard to like mentally get there. <sighs> Can Olivia stop being traumatized? Like, can they stop just giving her trauma after trauma after trauma? Like, I just want her to be happy. I guess those are the people that raised her. The thought unifier's having adverse effects. He's, he's talking out of sequence. Two hours ago, the Christmas tree Macy's sailed to have a nap. Get the thing off him. Not an amateur, Pete. I need this contraption if I am to retrieve the plan to defeat the observers from the depths of my memory. Yeah, maybe. We don't know what that thing is doing to you. Yeah. Maybe we could have a new plan. Good morning. I hope the floor wasn't too bad. Oh, no, I slept well, thank you. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Like, that's your three year old, but now they're 24, 5? Walter? You've always documented things. So are you absolutely sure that you didn't write anything down? Fair question. I can't remember, but anything is possible. Even if there were files, you can't go back to Harvard. We can't get in. Why? Why not? What? Yeah. Is it under surveillance? It was taken over by observers five mm -hmm. years ago. Some kind of base or no one knows exactly. Probably trying to stop Walter. Well, that's not a problem for someone who's done acid. What? <laughs> I think it is, Walter. Tunnels! We don't have time to dig tunnels, Walter, or the manpower. Maybe there already are. 
They're already there. Team's tunnels. Did Walter create them when he was on acid? Tunnels that house the steam pipes that heat Harvard. Oh, okay. He didn't create them. Maybe he found them. Yes, he. I've seen that uh, screen grab before. Okay, so they're gonna use tunnels to get to Harvard to see if Walter wrote anything down regarding the plan that can help him unify it in his mind and then remember how to defeat the observers. I see no way this can go wrong. Sometimes Billy and I would play swim trunks. Speedo. What was that? Yeah. I've been looking for you this way. <laughs> okay, but it's presumably they're inside as well, no? So like when they go in, like there's still will be observers there, no? Okay. Maybe they're just guarding it in case they try to come and they don't know about the tunnels. Our lab! Oh my. Oh yeah. Why? Protected, I imagine. So they weren't in the lab. I thought that they were in the lab when uh, they got them in the first episode, like Walter and uh, Astrid and Peter. Where were they? I can't remember. They were somewhere else, I guess. Betamax recorder on a tripod. Look at the blast pack. This is the amber point of origin. I, I, I must have been standing right here when I ambered this lab. Maybe he recorded something. I think I was making a video. Mm-hmm. Is the tape still in there? When did I switch to gray? <laughs> hide, 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 fucking hide. Think back. On your knees. <gasps> He's a loyalist. He's not gonna tell us anything. What the fuck are they gonna do with him? Why would he have come here? I mean, the place is abandoned. Well, for all yeah. we know, we tripped some silent alarm. Either way, someone's gonna notice him missing sooner or later. Can you talk to us, Gail, or whatever your name is again? Why did you come here? We don't even know if it's the science building anymore. We have no idea what's in there or what could be waiting for us. We don't. He does. He does. Exactly. I'm sure he knows plenty. Um, Henrietta? We're not, we're not. What do you know about the science building? You're a real open book. What are you gonna do? I'm good at opening books. Where, where did you get that? What is it? Is it one of their devices? Like an older one? What's important is that I have it. Let's, let's, let's not, let's not torture people, maybe, you know, like. What do they use the science building for? <sighs> <laughs> Um, Henrietta? Did she, did she just age him? I don't think you want to waste any more precious time. What the fuck is that? I mean, hopefully nobody outside can hear anything. I'm gonna ask you again. What do we need to know about the science building? Edda? What are you doing? Yeah. It's called an angel it's device. It's angel. Full charge. Steel's around 25, 30 years. This is a long way from a full charge. He's so disorientated by the process, he loses the will to lie. Or he holds out until his heart fails. What are you doing? I'm giving him water. Being you want to can go ahead, that's how you do it. He can't have water yet, not for another three hours. Why? He's not worth a single tear. He's a person. Loyalists sell out their own kind, like rats. I know you just woke up, but look around you, Mom. Can't you see what the observers have brought? This is war, and we're losing. Like, I... I get it, but also, like, you can't let that steal your humanity. Because then, haven't... The observer is already won, and what's the point of fighting anymore? We just need the silver for solder. What is the the bullet 
that she has? Like, what, what's the relevance of that? I don't believe that anybody's coming to look for you. See, I don't think that you're here because we were seen or because we triggered some sort of alert. I think <laughs> that you came here to feed the birds. Ah, the bread and the birds. You need to tell her what she wants to know now. You need to tell her before you get worse. Now, come on, you must have something to live for. What about the birds? Trying to help you. You don't have the authority to do that. Well, what authority do I need? You know, a loyalist just doesn't walk away when they've been captured by the resistance. How can you be so sure? Where are you from? 2015? You're new to the resistance. I've been around a lot longer than you may think. I will tell her what she needs to know. If, if you will go and tell my son... Really? I'm not coming home. Why are they fucking doing that? And that I loved him very much. I don't want him to keep looking for me. I don't want him hoping. And I've seen that too many times. People waiting for people. Everyone has an access code. And what's in the building? We don't ask. R rumors, mainly. What kind of rumors? Experiments. And what? People, probably. My access code is a two-part code. Okay. The first part is 010567. And the second part? Me. Oh, interesting. Where does this come from? Barbaric. Yeah. I agree. How could well. the resistance create such a device? We didn't. The loyalists did. It's old second gen observer tech. It was designed to prepare observers for time travel. But as you can see, the loyalists figured out a new way to use it on us. Isn't no amazing. We shouldn't use it on them. Yeah, there is. So you don't become like them. Like, what are you fighting if you become the enemy? You know? Like, it, they do evil to us, so we should do evil back to them. It's not a good logical way to think. Just saying. You can't bring him with you. There's only one way. I agree. Walter, you can't. Of course I can. Rather easily, in fact. I'm going to need a sharp scalpel and my long-handled stainless spoon. I, I, I feel very uncomfortable with where we're going. <laughs> I'll need another. Pay attention to the texture. Make sure it's spongy. You know, the Vietnamese consider pig's eyes to be a delicacy. An iris is like a fingerprint. Each has its own unique pattern. We can mimic that pattern. Okay, good. I'm glad that they're not gonna just take his eye, because that's what I was kind of worried about. The world has changed so much. It can be difficult to understand it. I'm not sure I want to understand it. I, yeah. Not bad. Yeah? <laughs> You're next. Is this gonna be a, a conversation, like an awkward one between mother and daughter? Thank you. For what? When I said it was logical for me to go turn the power on instead of you. I know protocol if something goes off track and that Peter should go because he's the engineer. I appreciate you respecting my experience. Because I know you'd rather it be you. I know you like to be in control. So do I. Yep. I did my best. Has to be exact. Well, is this exact? We'll find out. He looks so weird like that. I don't like it. Why? Why are they looking at Peter like that? Why does someone join the loyalists? Ooh, good. This is a good conversation. Pain. There were resistance fighters near my building. My children were outside. One of them was killed. My oldest boy. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I know something about losing a child. So after that moment, I just wanted to be safe. Yeah. You know, I was angry at the resistance because <laughs> it's, it's hopeless. So I do this job. They give us a safe place to live, get taken care of, they look after us. Safe from them, just... And I don't have to worry, at least about my boy. I <sighs> get that. I'll never understand you people. You can't win. 
the world would be a much safer place if you just stopped trying to fight them. But it wouldn't be safer. The world would literally end. Does, does he not understand that? There would be no future for your son that is alive. Because they're destroying the planet that, you know, he currently resides on. What's Manfredi doing in Building 4? That's not his sector. Manfredi. Come in. Over. Answer it. We had an agreement. Now answer it. Yeah. Hey there, what's up? What the hell are you doing accessing the medical science wing? You're supposed to be in Sector 7. Tell him that you needed to change a fuse. Fuse blew. Uh, I went to fix it. Since when does security change fuses? Who asked you to do that? One mark. Say one mark. Number 19. Big guy 19, really? Change your stupid fuse and get back to your post. Who's number 19? Is it some sort of code? I'm just, I, I don't know. What? I was hoping they would keep him in the amber. What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? We have to keep on moving. Yeah. Think about what's on it. Think about your future. We have to make a time for vengeance and a time for grieving, but it is not now. Stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll pay for what they've done. I promise. Oh my god, like you just almost fucked everything. Like the entire future. Do you really think you can win? Yeah, I think that they can. They've saved the world more than once. You would not exist if not for them. Multiple times. <laughs> like, they have to win. So that all the people that died, including your son, didn't die for nothing. Yeah. <sighs> he lost hope. You know, so much of the season so far has been about the idea of, of hope and what the absence of it can do to a person and like who they can become. <laughs> okay, they made it back. Oh, my goodness. She's not happy, but she's gonna go tell that guy probably. I'm um, I'm really sorry about Agent Foster. Freedom has its costs. Simon knew that. Get up, you're traveling. Where? Where are you taking him? He's useless to us now. I'm turning him over to the resistance. I know that you're upset right now, but he did give us the code. Yeah, of course he did. It's natural human instinct to live as long as possible. The same quality they used to turn us into slaves. He joined them in order to protect what was left of his family. His son? He's a liar. That's what they're trained to do. He has no son. He gave you the code because he saw in your eyes a weakness. He saw in your eyes that you could be manipulated, that maybe he could convince you to let him go. That's not gonna happen, sweetheart. Okay, but if you had gotten the code your way, y'all would be dead. I understand how hurt you must be. You don't know my world. You're right. I don't know your world. But I had hoped for you. That wherever you were, you weren't hardened by what had happened to you. Yeah. And it's not that I don't see what the observers have brought, I do. But what concerns me more is what they've taken away. Her humanity. Her softness. This is the world. It is what it is. I mean, you don't have to be that way, though. 143 Dunstable Street, number 7. His name is Oscar. I keep my word. I know you do. I hope he's not lying. I don't think he is because he was there to feed the pigeons, you know. Now we need to find out what the tape says, if the tape is there, if part of the tape is there, if it works, all that. I wonder what she's gonna do with the, the sedative. Oh, maybe she just knocked him out. Maybe he just passed out. Maybe Olivia's words will reach her, some part of her. And she'll just leave him in a field or something and not with the resistance. You don't have a son, do you? 
He could be lying. No. Oh, he was lying. She was right. Mm. So what's at 143 Dunstable Street? I was hoping right up until the last minute that she could somehow convince you. Is that a trap? You were right about me. I became a loyalist because I'm a coward. Get out of here. She did let him go, though. I'm going to fight for the resistance. I want you to know that. Are you? You don't have to lie anymore. I already let you go. Well, that's why this time I'm hoping you'll believe me. You why? said I saw something in her eyes. You were right. There was a, a certainty that I've never seen before. And I, I, I don't know how to explain it other than to say I felt hope for the first time that we were supposed to win. Aww. Yeah. Why are you letting me live? Because the observers have taken enough. Something that I saw in her eyes as well. Disappointment? Pity. Uh. Pity for who? For all of us. <sighs> yeah. For the world. I mean, she feels responsible because she didn't save it. It looks like the heat from the laser might have damaged the PVC. It might have damaged the tape. I told you we should have gone slower. <sighs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Whoever you are, if you found this tape, I have documented all the parts of the plasma on video tapes. You must recover each tape and follow the instructions of each of those tapes. Okay. So he hid them in different places. What you need to do will be clear to you. If successful, this plan will restore us and rid the world of the observers. You were chosen this. This is your destiny. I understand if you're frightened, it will not be easy, but I trust that the same will that brought you here will keep you going. It no! No, oh, where are the other tapes? She's showing her she let him go. I'm on my way back. See, but I trust that the same will that brought you here will keep you going. Okay, where are the tapes? It is important that you follow the tapes. You must begin this journey right away. You are humanity's only hope. Now, where? you must retrieve the first tape. Okay, where is that? Did, did they say where it was and they just didn't show it to us, the audience, at this exact moment in time? <laughs> um, I hope so. Um, Okay, so there is a lot to unpack and talk about in this episode, so I'm just going to get right into it. So, something that I think is really interesting, and it's sort of like overlapping with Battlestar Galactica, which I'm also watching right now, in an interesting way, is like, what does it mean to be human in a sort of like, post-apocalyptic human catastrophe disaster takeover sort of world right and like how do you continue to keep the elements of what makes you human i.e like kindness compassion hope in a world that has stripped all of that away from you and your ability to like tap into that kindness, right? So I think this episode brought up a really interesting question in regards to Henrietta and Olivia and their worldview and how they grew up opposite each other, yeah? So Olivia had a very traumatic childhood. She was the victim of an abusive stepfather. She was the victim of experimentation. Like we know that Olivia's childhood, childhood could have easily been shaped in a very negative way and caused her to close off from people, which it did. But 
Olivia never lost her compassion or her kindness or her ability to see the good in people and tap into to the, those uh, aspects of her personality and, and everything, right? Like the overwhelming quality that Olivia has, I think, is compassion. And that's why we love her so much, right? Like she has been through so much trauma. This episode, I'll talk about it in a bit, like just shows another trauma that she's gone through and she still chooses kindness. However, it's interesting because we also have Henrietta who, if she remembers anything about her parents, like who they were and what life was like before the observers, she was three. Um, it's very, very little. Like think of what you remember of your life three years old and earlier. Um, it's probably hazy, like more of like abstract fragments and feelings and ideas rather than solidified memories. And so Henrietta has always lived in a post observers world and the observers are, I don't like to usually like make things so black and white, but they seem to have a lot of uh, evil in them, right? Um, and so she's living in like a world that is ravaged by war and death and destruction and the observers are the cause of that and that's the world that she grew up in and that she understands and that she knows where kindness and compassion things like that are weaknesses that can be used against you and so it makes sense that her worldview is what it is right that being said, and of course I have to acknowledge, like it's easy for me to sit here like removed from the situations that are being depicted in the show and, and say this, but I really do think that when things are the worst they could possibly be is when you need to be the most human you possibly can. If humanity survives by losing everything that makes us human, compassion, kindness, love, generosity, you know, things like that, then humanity hasn't survived, right? And so I think that fighting to keep those things especially alive is so vital and so important. And I don't know, it's, it's really hard because I can also like understand, like sitting here thinking about what hell Henrietta's life must be, must have been searching for her parents and um, just living in this world where observers have ultimate power and can just kill you for the fuck of it, you know, for the sake of it, for, you know, who knows why. And it's almost impossible to stop them. Like, it's very easy to see how somebody could shut their feelings off, numb themselves to the world and just fight with a any means necessary sort of mentality, right? Like you're literally fighting for their survival of your race of humans, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's, it's very tricky. Like I can definitely see it from both of their perspectives. And while I obviously want Henrietta to be compassionate, to treat people better, because I don't think that answering an evil act with an evil act is a way to counter evil, you know? Like, you, <laughs> if you become the enemy to defeat the enemy, then at the end of the day, you've changed who you are in a way that negatively impacts you and is only going to hurt you in the end, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know that I'm describing this well, but essentially I'm just saying like, I, I don't think that answering evil with evil is, is going to make good win out in the end, right? So I think that Olivia's sort of, in a way, naive optimism in this situation 
is really beneficial. Like, I don't think she's naive. Um, I think that she is being put in a world that she has not lived and that she doesn't understand Henrietta's experience of. And I think that it's fair for Henrietta to say, like, you don't understand this world and this experience. He's lying to you because ultimately he was lying to her. And like, I'm fucking Olivia. Like I fell for it hook, line and sinker too, you know, because I'm a very <laughs> emotional <laughs> person. And so like a sob story, like that would get me. Um, however, I, I do think that there's more nuance to his, his story than what he said, right? Like he said, he's going to fight for the resistance now. And I, I do believe him. But I think that even though his story about his son was a lie, I think that his reasons for joining, um, which he said, you know, pain, and he was angry at the resistance, right? I think that that's valid. I think that he wasn't lying in that situation. I think that it would be scary to exist in that world. And I think that him being angry at the resistance because you're fighting a losing battle and you're only making people suffer because like there's no hope of winning this war. Like he had already conceded to losing and I think that that's why he joined the loyalists because he didn't actually see another choice. And so I think that that makes sense. I think probably a lot of people joined the loyalists because they keep them safe, you know, safe from themselves. But, you know, I think that it's very reminiscent of kind of like a storyline on Battlestar right now. And I won't say what because I don't want to spoil it for anybody who's not watching. But this idea of like joining up with this other cause because you're disillusioned with the resistance and you're upset because it seems like you're fighting a losing battle and you've given up hope that there's a chance of winning. Like, I think that that makes sense and when the enemy you're fighting is so technologically advanced compared to you so overwhelmingly powerful compared to you they can literally read your thoughts and then like fucking kill you with them like it makes sense that the regular everyday person walking down the street would be like i fight and i die or i submit and I live. And sure, I don't love living this way, but I live, right? Which is interesting because it's kind of what Henrietta was saying about the human instinct to survive, which as we know, very strong. Like she said, totally right about that. So it's how they turn them into slaves. But it's interesting that she doesn't also view the loyalists as slaves because they are. In, in my opinion, right? They're just like a higher rank of it. I think the loyalists are just doing what they, they have to to survive, right? And I'm not saying that I think that that's okay. I'm not saying I agree with the loyalists, you know, hunting down other humans, hurting other humans, uh, in any way being in the position that they're in. I just think that and they're kind of trapped there as well, right? It's like, uh, submit or die. And like Henrietta said, the human instinct to survive is very strong. So I also think that the show as, as a whole this season is really playing with the idea of hope and how powerful of an emotion hope is and how devastating and damaging the absence of hope is, right? Like when the loyalist saw, what did he say he saw? He saw like determination in Olivia's eyes and he knew that they were supposed to win. Like humanity was supposed to win. Like that's what he took away from, from what he saw in Olivia's eyes, that there was something to fight for and that there was, a reason to fight and I, I think that the reason without saying the reason is is hope and I think that that's why Henrietta saw pity she thinks in Olivia's eyes and I don't think it was pity I think it was 
sadness and compassion for this world that has lost hope. You know, Walter talking about music being hope in the last episode, and maybe I'm reading too much into things, but I, I really do think that the, the message of these past two episodes at least has been Olivia and Peter and Walter, Henrietta, right? Like, they are the hope of the future. They are the hope of humanity. And the world that they've entered into, um, aside from Henrietta, because she exists in this world already, Astrid as well, um, the world that they've entered into 21-ish years in the future is a world devoid of hope that has had all of the hope sucked dry, essentially, right? I really like this theme that I'm noticing throughout these episodes of just the importance of hope and what hope can do and can accomplish and the sort of miracle that it can be and how it can completely change humanity and the future. Just this, you know, little, little bit of hope. And I, I don't know, I, I really, I really like the, the idea of it, right? Because, I mean, poets and <laughs> writers have been toying with the idea of hope and what it does and how important it is for centuries, millennia, probably. <laughs> and I just, I think that as a species, we sort of don't get tired of stories where hope prevails and good wins over evil and that's kind of the story that Fringe is telling, at least I hope. <laughs> and I, I really like it. I, I don't have something deep and profound to say, unfortunately. My brain is, is not on that wavelength today, but I, I, I think that there's something that really resonates with all of us about a story where the odds are stacked against you and you choose hope and you win. And we as the audience, of course, believe Olivia and Peter and Walter and Astrid will save the world because we've seen them do it. They've done it <laughs> multiple times at this point. And so we have faith and hope in them. And now just their existence in this world is, is creating faith and hope, right? Also, can I just talk about this angel device for a second? Because like, that is so fucked up. Like, it's super fucked up that the loyalists and the observers use that to torture and kill humans. Super fucked up that they figured out a way to do that in the first place. Um, yeah, just, just like, mind blown at the, the evilness I think necessary to do that. Obviously, I, d I don't agree with Henrietta using it either because, again, like I said, I don't think that answering an evil act with an evil act is going to be good in the end. Um, I was very proud of her for making the choice to let him go, for listening to Olivia and, I don't know, hopefully finding that spark of hope within herself. Like, she has had to be hard because the world is hard. And that's how she survived. And I don't blame her for that. I'm, I'm not upset at her for that. I think that hopefully now with Olivia and Peter back, she can allow herself to be a little bit softer and they can save the world and rid it of the observers. And then she can, we have hope. We have a path that we're gonna take. We have tapes to find. We have a mission. And I personally, like, am feeling a little bit better about the direction this season is going. Um, I feel like I'm settling more into the tone, the theme, the dynamics of everything. It, it Like, I'm not fully settled in yet, but I, I think it's just going to take, like, a, an episode or two more. And I, I feel much more confident in this season and where we're going now, though than I did in the first episode. So I have hope, we have hope. We're going somewhere, we're doing something. <laughs> we have a tape, 
we have a series of tapes, we have a plan. Um, yeah. I just hope that we get to see more of Broyles because like we saw him in episode 19. We have yet to see him in season five. Like I want more Broyles. All right. And the last thing that I think I want to talk about is Olivia and her trauma, right? Last episode, we saw Peter's perspective on leading up to uh, Henrietta's disappearance. This season we've seen now, or oh, I can't talk. This episode we saw Olivia's perspective on the lead up to the disappearance and sort of her trauma over it. And it, it just, it breaks my heart for both of them. But just seeing Olivia struggling in this moment and these episodes, to sort of reconcile going into Amber and then waking up 21-ish years later and your daughter is fully grown. Like it's, it's gonna be a traumatizing situation, right? Because all Olivia wanted was a normal life, a happy family. She had that with Peter and in a second it was taken away and now she woke up and I think so much more time than she thought would have passed has passed and she's lost an entire lifetime with her daughter. You know, she missed so many firsts. She wasn't able to raise her and help her become who she was gonna become. And I just, it, it really, shatters my heart for Olivia and Peter just like I can't I, I can't fathom the trauma of it right so I don't have a lot to say about it just acknowledging it and being aware of it and being sad for her because like I just I, I want these characters to be happy you guys <laughs> I just want them to be happy anyway I think that's all that I have to say. You guys are probably like, thank God. <laughs> if you want, you can like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also watch the next episode right now over on Patreon if you're watching this on YouTube, as well as my entire full-length reaction to this episode and every single episode thus far of Fringe. That is over on Patreon as well. I hope to see you guys next time for episode three, where hopefully we are on the case of the tapes. Until then, bye guys.